Hi everyone, welcome back to our series on firepower appliances. In this video we're going to focus on an interesting design where we put together an ASA in failover with an FTD cluster running as IPS inline pair. So here we're going to go and make an overview of the setup then we'll do a few other videos to capture resiliency by removing data links and also losing ASA or FTD units in the active path. Out of our range of appliances we are focused on Firepower 4150s in this demo. That's what we're using to form this design. For our Firepower appliances we use a chassis manager so this is how they install either an ASA or FTD application and in case of an FTD uh, we actually used FXOS to put together an FTD cluster. ASA failover design is pretty straightforward and it's been covered in previous videos. We have two unique VPCs that attach to primary and secondary units allowing the switches to associate an active and standby max to appropriate port channel and we are passing um, all of the trunk uh, VLANs of interfaces there. So when we look at this design we improve on the previous design where we use standalone FTD units by actually pulling together an FTD cluster uh, this allows the FTD units that are tapping into ASA primary and secondary unit VPCs, uh, they're using inline pairing in this case. So if you look at these simple markings here for our VPC port channels, we are actually tapping into those and dual attaching between the ASAs and FTD units uh, for those VPCs and we're single attaching, well, that's one option, uh, on the bottom to the switches themselves. The important piece here is that we actually take these inline pairs and place them in an inline set which allows us to track the state between our primary and secondary VPCs. Take a look at the, the diagram in a little more detail here. You can see the northbound VPCs from ASAs. You can see the dual attachment of these port channels between our primary and secondary ASAs into FTD units. Uh, these ports are then paired through uh, actually pairing of the port channels themselves. But since this is a cluster, we simply pair these two ports and every other unit in the cluster will also pair the same uh, interfaces or port channels on them uh, together. On the bottom here you can see that we're single attaching in this case to the switch and you can see all of the details on the left here of what ports are attaching to what. Now let's take a look at one interesting aspect of this design. So if we are actually single attaching on the bottom, what that means is if we lose a single port for example this port right here, the blue one, or we lose an actual switch losing both of the ports on this FTD master, this unit will pull itself out of the cluster because its health score is going to be lower than the one of the FTD2 unit. So FTD2 will become the master and keep going. Active ASA is not going to change in this case because it's only going to lose one link out of its VPC, but it still has that path to the other FTD and it will keep going. Uh, in this case, even if we have our AVC connections uh, defined in FMC access control policy, they will actually be tracked between the two FTD units. So the reason also that this unit pulls itself out of the cluster is because if it's handling certain connections, and traffic is actually uh, rebalanced or uh, placed over cluster controlling to this unit. We don't want it to black hole that traffic due to losing these interfaces. Now let's just take a look at another option that's an interesting one um, for this design. What we can do here is 
dual attach from the FTDs into the switches themselves. So as you can see, we are not changing any port channels between the FTDs and ASAs. We're simply taking an additional port for each port channel here, port channel 20 or 21 on each FTD unit and attaching it to the other switch. Uh, this simply adds more ports on this VPC, um, you know, both VPCs, primary and secondary VPCs on the switches themselves and the same happens on FTD units. So in this situation, if we actually lose a switch, we will lose equal number of ports on both FTD units in the cluster, which means that their health score is still going to be the same. And in turn, what this will do is actually keep both FTD units in the cluster and keep an equal performance in terms of NGIPS processing. So this is another option for us to use with this design because clustering is involved. As with previous videos, we have the same setup. Um, we have our two contexts in place on ASA, shared outside interface, and we actually have unique inside interfaces that can be used to apply different policies to these contexts inside the FMC. Uh, these VLANs pass unchanged through the FTD cluster in this case um, and get to these inside hosts that you see there. Now let's take a look at our FXOS layouts here. So here's our ASA1 that has northbound interfaces with two ports and then southbound interfaces with two ports. We see the same type of um, interfaces and port channels on the ASA2 unit. If we take a look at our FTD unit, we now see a single port in each port channel here. And we do see that the cluster control link is also up with port channel 48. That is a dual attachment for the cluster control plane. FTD2 unit, same type of layout here, cluster control link, and everything is green. So let's take a look at our FMC config now. We have two units in the cluster. FTD1 is master. Take a look at its interfaces. As you saw in FXOS, we had two ports per ASA port channel and one port on each FTD port channel. So as you know, we are in a two-node cluster and each node in the cluster contributes a port into this port channel. So this is uh, why we have uh, it set up. So if you added more FTD nodes, you would simply add more ports into that same uh, port channel on the ASA. Looking at FMC interfaces here, we have four port channels that we had configured on FXOS and we named them appropriately. So port channel 10 takes ASA primary VPC into FTD cluster, one port into each unit. Then we have the, this primary VPC in the cluster going to their respective switches. In our case, it's in single attached. Then we have ASA secondary VPC going into both units on the FTD cluster, and then secondary VPC from the cluster going into the switch itself. If we take a look at the inline sets, we appropriately pair the primary port channels with the secondary port channels. That's pretty much all we need there. Now, <clears throat> looking at the policies themselves, in our access control policy, <clears throat> because we are using FTD cluster now, we can actually use application visibility and control. So now we can start identifying those apps and applying policies appropriately. So this means that the cluster itself is going to track state and continue those applications once you actually switch over or lose a unit in a cluster. So let's take a look at our setup now. If we start with our switches here, I <clears throat> simply show you the northbound 
port channels 10 and 11, uh, which correspond to VPCs 110 and 111. So same you can see on switch 2. Uh, if we take a look at southbound port channels that uh, FTD plugs in, that's a port channel 30 and 31, respective VPCs, and you see the same type of uh, connections here on switch 2. Taking a look at our ASAs, um, <clears throat> I'll take a look at the show failover output on standby. I see two units in active standby and I see all the interfaces monitored. That's an important piece there. If uh, you take a look at the con context 2 in this case, I'm looking at the connections. I see two connections in there. I see two IPs. Contexts are in routed mode and have their ARPs properly populated. If I change into context 1, I see its own connections in place, different IP addresses, and different ARPs. If we change to system context, let's just take a look at how contexts are created in system here. I see those um, appropriate subinterfaces for outside and inside. If we take a look at our FTD unit consoles, I can look at show cluster info information here and see two units in master-slave relationship. And taking a look at the connections themselves on both of these units, I can see that my unit 1 is acting as backup for these connections that we saw in ASA and unit 2, FTD2, is actually owning those connections. So, so that is how we have our setup and looking at the connectivity between all of these, I can go on host A and I can issue ping from A to B and have that connectivity in place and from A to C the pings are all working and I have my two SSH connections running top um, that is what you saw um, actually displayed in both of these units um, ASA and FTD I am receiving iPerf UDP connections same over here so those are the other two UDP connections that you have in place so that concludes our review. Hope this was useful for you. Thank you for watching.